I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, Jesus said that he wants the world to know that God has sent him and has loved us as much as God has loved him. Look at your life. Is that love being made manifest in you? Let's start by you trusting God to meet your needs. So are you ready to make that demand now? Listen, as you make that demand, let your faith, I don't know what need you have right now. I don't know what you need to close up today. I don't know what bill you have to pay today. But believe me, if you will only believe the words that you're going to speak right now, a miracle is going to take place. Are you ready? Say, Father, today I demand my daily bread and I receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Praise God. Simple but powerful. You know, and that's how the things of the Spirit is. Jesus looked at that man and said, take up your bed and walk. Now, it looked like an ordinary, it looked like just ordinary words. Take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and go home. And he met one man, he says, Sir, if you, are, if you are willing, you will make me well. He says, I'm willing. Be thou, be made whole. And that was it. He didn't have to say, okay, mm, I'm releasing power into you right now. He just spoke his word. And it was so. See, the woman with the issue of if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And then she, she came, you know, in the crowd and just touched. And it was at the moment she touched, she was made whole. She didn't negotiate with Jesus. He said, Master, make sure you release power into your, um, into your garments. Jesus just, I mean, I'm sure Jesus just picked up that clothes and wore that day. And I don't think Jesus took the cloth and said, Father, I release unction into this garment now. As I wear this garment, oh, let this garment carry your presence. No, I don't think he did that. He just picked up that garment and walked. And he was going, doing his thing. And, and suddenly, he heard in his spirit, someone, something has happened to someone. Now, you see, the Holy Spirit walks that way with us. He walks that way with us. I'm sure the Holy Spirit wanted, see, the woman would have just touched the hem of his garment, got healed, and went back home. And then she would begin to share the testimony with her friends. And maybe somehow it would have still gotten to Jesus. But I believe the Holy Spirit wanted us to know what happened. Now, because because there are many things that happen around us that we don't see. Good things I'm talking about. There are many activities of angels around us that we don't see. But once in a while, the Holy Spirit makes us see them so that we appreciate what He's doing in our lives. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. You don't know how God is protecting you. You, know, you are sleeping in the night. You don't know what's going on behind the scene. You don't know. It's amazing you know, how you, you are talking to people and they're like, ah, um, there's been kind of robbery going on around and stuff you know, ah, protect yourself protect and then you're thinking okay what what what, what do i do to protect and then it just hits your spirit trust god to protect you mm, okay yeah that's true now you see i won't say trust god to protect you now I'm talking about physical protection i won't say trust god to protect you he's not saying leave your doors open leave everything carelessly and then no your heart should be on God. Now, wait. Now, any other thing you want to do, you run it by Him. 
That's what it is. So trust God to protect. Trust God to protect you doesn't mean, okay, God, you're protecting me. I fold my arms. No. Okay, Lord. I trust you're my protector. Is there anything you will have me do? That's acknowledging that you know him as your Lord. Is there anything you will have me do? And he will give me instructions. So I was thinking all these thoughts. And then it just dropped in my spirit. Trust God to protect you. I said, yeah. I said, Lord, you know you're the one that protects us. If there's anything you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. So that period, and one day, you know, I came out of the house and I noticed that the cable of my generator have been unplugged and carefully folded and kept aside. When I saw it at first, I like, uh, who did this? You know. Then I called uh, the lady working with us. I said, why would you roll this thing? And what was, as in, what's going on? He said, no, she didn't do that. She's just saying it. I said, I, I called my wife. I'm like, ah, did anybody come to work on this journey yesterday? She said, no. So what's this? She said, she's just saying it. I said, whoa. Oh, that means something happened here in the night. Praise God. Obviously, someone came to steal the gem. And if, now, for whatever reason, the gem was still there. So what happened? And nobody comes, nobody came to the house to say, hey, you know, I, last night I was passing by your house and I saw uh, nobody. So what happened? See, now, I, like I was telling him, I was say, I'm sure the Lord just wanted us to know how well he's protecting us, praise God. So I told my wife, like, now I, I, I wish there's a way we, could, we can just play back and see what happened you know, to whoever that person was. But that's how he does. So sometimes he wants us to see. So when that woman touched the hem of the garment, of Jesus' garment, he, he just, the Holy Spirit wanted us to know that such a thing happens. And so Jesus stopped. I said, someone touched him. How do you know he thinks someone touched him? See, he said, virtue left me. So Jesus was just doing it. Now, now Peter was a bit confused. Peter said, so, sorry, I don't understand. Everybody, see, see, see you now. You are in the midst of a crowd. You know, it's not like today that you have protocols everywhere and then the, the pastor is coming around and, you know, protocol members are, you know. You know Jesus, Jesus, Peter said, everybody's strong in you. So how can he be saying, who touched me? Okay, me, I touched you. You know, Andrew, didn't you touch Jesus? Ah, ah, ah. see, I was old because I didn't want, you know. I don't get, why are you saying someone touched you? It's a funny question to ask, to ask at that time. And I don't know, someone touched me because I perceive virtue. Okay. So what happened actually? Jesus was walking and everybody was just doing and moving. And, and suddenly, because if you're a minister, if you've ministered under the anointing, you will understand when it says virtue left me. You will understand it. So there's something, there's just something happened. Something just happened here. And so I, I, I'm sure Jesus, first of all, felt something like, ah, what's going on? Always with, hey, somebody just touched you. I said, yeah, but everybody's touching you. No, 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 no. Someone just pulled out virtue from me. Wow, who's that person? I'm sure the Holy Ghost pointed out the woman to Jesus. So Jesus knew. Because the Bible says, when the woman realized that she cannot be hidden. How did she realize she cannot be hidden? I'm sure Jesus was looking at her and said, somebody touched me. And he was just looking at her. Well, you know, you know how it is, eh? He knows already, so what am, I, what am I trying to hide here for? Let me just own up. And I said, it's me. And then she told the whole story. And Jesus said, go and be made whole. Praise God. Now, what am I saying? This is Jesus. Loaded with so much power. That even his clothes could transmit power. And like I said, I don't think he prayed on those clothes. And then Jesus speaking in John chapter 17 and from verse 20, 23 and then 25. He said, 
that the world may know that you have loved them as much as you have loved me. I want you to think, think. Do you, do you believe, first of all, that God loves you as much as he loved Jesus? Yeah, but why can't I do miracles like Jesus was doing miracles? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus never set out to do miracles. You see, we confuse ourselves and, and, and we don't know how to live life. Jesus didn't wake up and say, now I will begin to do miracles. No, no. The Bible says he was moved with compassion. Now, the same compassion Jesus had, you have it. But you know your problem? You don't have courage. You don't add courage to that compassion. So you meet someone in need. person needs some money. And you wish you could do something about it. You really want to do something about it. But you, you, you just, um, what do I do now? But I don't have that kind of money. I don't have that kind of money. I wish I had. I wish I had. I wish I had. And that's where you stop. You have not released your mind to the possibilities of God from within your spirit. You haven't. I remember a dear sister of mine, you know, she was always calling me, oh, pastor, my house rent, my house rent, my house rent. You know, that it's been a while. I mean, you know, COVID-19 happened, I've, you know, all stuff. Oh, my house, they, they've been calling me. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So I began to talk to the Lord about it. I said, Lord, what do we do? And I'll never forget one day I was driving home and I heard the Lord says, go see her and pray with her concerning the house rent. I said, okay, so I drove down and I called her. I said, I'm outside your house, please come out. And then she came and I said, give me your hand. She brought her hand and I held her hands. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that house rent paid now. I said, that's all, you can go. And then I left. In a few weeks, she paid the house rent. Praise <laughs> God. Now, what happened? Now, the compassion was there. But it is sometimes we give up at that place. We just give up there. We don't realize that we can actually do something about it. Doing something about it doesn't mean giving the person the money. You see, that's what we don't understand. We haven't learned how to trust the Holy Spirit and allow courage to flow with our compassion. Because you see the Holy Spirit, He will always tell you what to do. Not only to meet people's need, also to meet your own need. He will tell you what to do. A dear sister shared with me recently, now she was cooking. And then the gas finished. And they didn't know what to do because the food was on fire and the children, they were hungry. Oh, how do we start going about getting gas? And I know how do we... And then it came to her spirit. I said, hey, so gather the children and say, look, let's worship God and let's trust God for a miracle. And then they praised God for a while. And after praising God, they, she just lit, I mean, put on the, 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 the cooker and lit it up. It came on. And it finished cooking all the food that they were cooking. How do you explain that? Do you think God will ever want you to be stranded? Talk to me. Do you think God will look at you and say, you know, sometimes we just feel, I wish I have all the power in the world. You do. You have not learned how to use it. You haven't learned. That's your problem. You haven't learned how to use the power that you have. I wish I could. You can. I wish. Hey, stop saying I wish. Begin to ask the Lord who is in you. Begin to ask him, Lord, what do I do concerning this situation? That is where you start. 
then soon he will begin to tell you what to do. And when he tells you what to do, listen, I have, you know, when I say this thing, it, it sounds, I have never, since I knew this is, I have never been stranded in my life. It's impossible. It's impossible. That is the reason he says, <laughs> he says, lo, I am with you all way, even to the end of the world. What is he doing with you? He is with us to tell us what to do in every situation. Listen, brothers and sisters, he wants the world to know that he loves you. It is time for the world to begin to see you as someone whom God loves. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.